Hi there, this is Dave. This is Dave Talks Comics. This is a Dave Talks Comics video. Today is November 7th, 2023. And I'm just gonna go through some stuff I bought this past weekend on the 5th at a show in Annandale, Virginia. I spent a little over an hour, maybe an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes at this show going through some boxes, mostly from one dealer whom I've bought stuff from before. I think his store is called Fan Data or something like that. He, he used to do a catalog of fans, at least from what I've been able to find on the internet, a kind of a directory, I guess, for fans and stores and other things. But he doesn't, it used to be a print edition, I think going back to the late 70s or something, maybe even earlier than that. Anyhow, he, he has really good prices. Uh, this time around, all of his books, well, most of his books, were either 50 cents or $2. And so here's what I got. I got a total of 21 books. I paid, I think, $19 for them, plus it cost me $3 to get in. Now, you can ignore the prices that are on the bags because those are not representative of what I paid. So this is an issue of Star Trek. This is the 1984 series of Star Trek, issue number 10. I bought a bunch of these at the Baltimore Comic Con, what, I guess, two months ago. And I already had a few. So I'm trying to, to, to get all the first 20 issues or so. Although the series ran for something, I think, 40-some issues or maybe more than that. This is the first part of a a mirror universe, a you know, which followed up on the mirror mirror story. I think this is a seven part story. I have, I think all but two of the parts of this story. I have not started to read this series of Star Trek yet. I think I'm missing about six or seven issues from the first 20 to have all of them at this point. But this is the only one I found and this one cost me $2 as do the rest of these first few issues that I'm gonna show you here. Now, this is an excellent issue, an excellent comic book, which, of course, I did not pay $10 for. This is Uncanny X-Men 170. I used to have this. I had a subscription to X-Men way back when, when this issue came out, starting in around 152, I think, was the first issue of my subscription, or maybe 151. But this is the, I think this is the second part or the third part of a three-part story, which kind of introduced the Morlocks, so I think one of them had appeared before then, but this was the first, the story was the first real introduction of the Morlocks, and um, this was drawn by Paul Smith, who I believe also drew the cover to this issue. His run, I don't think, lasted all that long. Anyway, I saw it. I don't have it. I used to have all these issues from like 145 to 183, something like that, way back when, but so I buy these when I can find them for a reasonable price, and $2 seemed like a very reasonable price for this issue. This is another comic book, Moon Knight number 35, that I used to have way back when. I, I'm pretty sure I bought this when it first came out. I'm sure it was the fact that the X-Men appeared in it. And Moon Knight kind of interested me, although I didn't consistently collect Moon Knight back then. But I, and this was in the era when Bill Sienkiewicz was drawing it. Uh, and, you know, for $2, you know, it's sort of thing that's always caught my eye, but quite often I'll see it for something more like $8, like it says on the cover there, or on the, on the bag there. Okay, so here we're getting into some Fantastic Four. These are the, this and the next two issues are all issues from when Doug Munch was writing it and Bill Sienkiewicz was drawing it, I'm currently reading, I started with Fantastic Four 204, and I'm going to read my way up through most of the 200s, I believe. That's the plan. Chris Claremont's run, or at least what they call his run, I guess because he was writing and drawing, it started with issue 232. But right before that, there was 11 issues that were written and drawn by Doug Munch and Bill Sienkiewicz, and that, um, and there was a there was a little bit of an overlap there where they did one issue, then Byrne came back and wrote and drew two issues, 
and then they did another 10 issue. So these are three of the issues. We got Fantastic Four 225, 224, and 222. So I still need 219 and 223. 219 is the first one, and then 220 and 221 were by Byrne, although they're not considered to be part of his, his run. Okay, so now we're getting into the 50 cent issues. All those ones before were $2 comics. So I have I keep hearing such good things about 52. I know it's like 15 years, 17 years ago, something like that. So I decided, to, I, these were 50 cents a piece, so I figured why not. So they didn't have issue one, otherwise I would have gotten it, but they did have the, the next five issues. So I got those. I'm... I've I've taken them out of the bag. I flipped through them. I gotta say, I'm not sure if I'm gonna love this or not. I'm not gonna try reading it until I have the first issue. So here's number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. I figure that's a good place to stop. They didn't have number seven. At the, at the con in this dealer's boxes. So I figured this was a good place to stop. Or at least I didn't see it if they did have it. See, then we've got, oh yes. Okay, now this is something I ran across and I just felt like I had to get it. Now I may have bought a few too many issues, but uh, Burglar Bill, Paul Grist is the one who did Jack Staff and did Kane, which I'm currently reading. I'm up to issue 12, I think, of Kane. Kane ran for 31 issues taking a break from it at the moment, but I will be back to it at some point. This issue came out in, I think Burglar Bill actually predate, predates Kane and predates Jack Staff. And this issue came out in 96, I believe. And I think there's some overlap between this and at least one of the other issues that I've got. And there was also a Burglar Bill story that showed up in an issue of Kane. It's kind of a backup feature, I guess, or to fill out the issue. So that's the summer fun special. Then, and you'll, you'll notice that this one is by Dancing Elephant Press, which is how Paul Grist published these in the UK. And this one also, Dancing Elephant Press. So... This is number three. This series only ran for three issues, but then he got picked up by by uh, Image, and Image printed a four issue series. And I think there's a fair amount of I I. It may be that the third issue of the Dancing Elephant Press series is more or less identical to the third issue of the Image series. Uh, in flipping through them. He said something about the fifth issue at the end of the fourth issue of this series, but from what I can see online, from based on my research, it seems like there was just four issues in this series. So I probably just should have gotten the Image series, but the Dancing Elephant series, because it was, it was complete. One, two, three, and four. It was complete, but I saw the UK comics and I couldn't resist picking those up too. If I thought a little more, maybe I would have, I wouldn't have uh, gotten all six. I would have just gotten four of them. That probably would have made more sense or, or maybe five, just not that number three from the UK series. Okay. And then this is the last thing. Well, not this one, but there's three of them. Action comics. Uh, these are the, I've been trying to get all the, the ones that, um, that Byrne wrote and drew in the late uh, 500s, I think it was from like 580 something to five to 600, I think. And then it went weekly. And these are kind of like a team up book. So, cause I think they'd stopped DC Comics Presents at this point. So Action Comics kind of became the Superman team up book in the early post Crisis on Infinite Earths era. So here we have the Metal Men and then the Green Lantern Corps and then we have the Metal Men again. So I'm still missing maybe a half dozen or more of these comics from this era, from this run. And that, oh wait, no wait, there is one more thing, although with a caveat, 
And that's damage control number one. This is the third damage control mini series. And I already have this issue. So I, I couldn't figure out if I had it or not. I, I yeah, I, I couldn't figure out which series this was from and which series I had. I mean, I have them listed. I, there's probably ways I could have figured it out. I could have cross-referenced it against something like my comic shop and seen the cover and then looked at my my inventory. My, my uh, inventory doesn't sound right. My, uh, my collection, I guess, spreadsheet and figured it out. But I don't know. I was just, I, I didn't. <laughs> So that's everything I bought at this show in Annandale this past weekend. Uh, I probably won't go again. They, they have them like every month or two. Probably won't go again for a while. I'll probably get the rest of those Munch and Sienkiewicz Fantastic Four issues online. And there's some other comic books that I want online, some more Batman comics, although God knows I've got plenty of stuff in the Bat Stack to keep me busy. And sometime around the time I'm dropping this, you might also want to look it over on DaveTalksComics.com because I should be—I just dropped earlier today a, a new episode of which I recorded it almost two weeks ago, but uh, I just dropped a new episode of Dave Talks Comics. That would be episode 187. So that's it from here. I'm Dave, and this is what I bought. And I've been talking about comics, and thank you for watching.